All right, so in this module, I want to look now at the phase transformation rate. So how fast these transformations occur. And so when we study the reaction rates of phase transformations, what we're talking about is kinetics. And that's just the study of reaction rates of these types of transformations. So to determine the reaction rate, uh, we need to measure the degree of transformation as a function of time, right? So, and we're typically holding the uh, temperature constant in these reactions. And so, um, so the first thing you might ask is, you know, how are these things measured? And so they tend to be measured by some things that we've already studied before. So X-ray diffraction, right? If we're dealing particularly with liquid to solid, right? Then um, solids, if they're crystalline, will have a um, um, will have a measurable um, intensity, right, of those peaks, and so we can look at that. Um, conductivity may change with um, phase transformation, um, and then we can also look at the propagation of sound waves uh, because those will tend to change uh, in those, right. So we use the fact that the properties of the material will change with the phase transformation, and that allows us to measure the degree in which it has occurred. So let's look at the overall idea here. Um, and I like to kind of break this up into two components. Um, the first one we've talked about, this is what we refer to as the thermodynamic part of the, the expression. And so this is the number of stable nuclei, right? We've uh, calculated the R star value, right? And we looked at that with degree of supercooling or undercooling. And that's the relationship that we have here. So that we see that um, the number of stable nuclei will increase as we decrease the temperature or increase the supercooling. Right, so that's the relationship we see here. So the further we go from the TM, the greater the number of nuclei are. On the other hand, we also have to consider diffusion, right? So for a stable nuclei to form, for a, a particle to grow, we have to have attachment of part uh, of atoms and molecules to this new phase. And so diffusion, as we're very much aware from that chapter, um, increases with increasing temperature, right? So the diffusion rates increase with increasing temperature. We saw that uh, in the, uh, the relationships in the, the chapter. So that's related to the activation energy here, uh, QD. So that increases with increasing temperatures. However, this uh, thermodynamic decrease, or sorry, this thermodynamic one increases with decreasing temperature. So you can see they have opposite relationships. And we plotted that here, right? So the, the, uh, the blue and then the red. So what we see is that if we want to look at the overall nucleation rate, so how fast things nucleate, there's a competition between these two factors, right? Because at low temperatures, the driving force is high. Um, from this term, but diffusion is very low. And so when this kind of relationship happens, the lowest thing dominates, right? So that's the, you know, in chemistry, we call this the rate limiting factor, right? So diffusion at the low temperatures is the rate limiting factor. And so the nucleation rate can't be fast because diffusion can occur fast. On the other hand, if we go at to pretty high temperatures, then nucleation is high, but the driving force, the thermodynamic component, is very low because we're close to the melting temperature. And so that rate limiting factor is the thermodynamic component. So what you see is that the rate is basically zero or very low at the high and low temperatures, whereas um, as these uh, go towards the middle, we see that we have a moderate amount of diffusion and a moderate um, driving force from the thermodynamic component and that's actually where we see the maximum rate because we have kind of the best of both worlds it's you know you can think about it as the goldilocks scenario because we have um, this one's too hot this one's too cold this one's just right and that's basically nucleation rate 
its maximum in the intermediate temperature range. And that's what we see with nucleation rate. And so um, if we go to the next slide here, the same actually holds um, for the overall transformation rate, which um, has nucleation along with growth, because growth is basically just that diffusion um, aspect. And so the overall transformation looks very much the same as it has this sort of C-shaped curve, low rates at the high and low temperatures, and then overall rate is highest here um, in the middle. So, and again, that's just because growth rate, uh, G dot, um, increases with increasing temperature because growth rate is basically connected to diffusion. So uh, we can turn this rate, so this is rate as a function of temperature that we just saw. We can turn that into um, a time axis. And so basically a rate you can think of as inverse time. And so here, um, if you just flip this S, or sorry, the C-shaped curve, um, we'll have this, or sorry, this kind of the reverse <laughs> C-shape, and we get a C-shaped curve here. Uh, that's because um, the, the time it takes will be lower if the rate is fastest, right? So they're kind of reciprocals here. Um, and so this is uh, now a time versus temperature axis. And why that's important is because we might want to know at a given temperature how long something takes to transform. So this is basically the transformation time. And so that has the reciprocal relationship of this. And we're going to use this in the next section uh, to look at um, a transformation diagram to see what we would expect at a given combination of temperatures and times.